Today, I want to talk about how Citadel has created and lost over $65 billion in synthetic shares. These were created by Citadel over the last few years, but as a result of reverse splits, the QCIP numbers have changed, and this is now dead money tied up and lost forever. Citadel is continually draining their fund of cash and will soon be margin cooled. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, David Murphy tweeted saying, for those that don't want to read through the entirety of my last posts, just focus on this page and ask yourself, where have I heard the term sold but not yet purchased before? So this article says that reverse mergers and reverse splits typically results in a change in the QCIP number, the nine digit identification symbol assigned to a public stock. Once that QCIP changes, the naked short has no apparent way to close out of the naked short position. Their cash is tied up and lost forever. No real shares under the old QCIP number exist anymore. It's all automatically converted to the new QCIP number. But obviously the QCIP number on these synthetic shares doesn't change as these shares aren't part of the DTCC system. Therefore these synthetic shorts are shares of a completely separate company that no longer exists and therefore these synthetic shorts are useless and warehoused on the books. Those trades can sit in the obligation warehouse forever in theory, but the aged fails, essentially the orphaned naked short transactions remain on the naked shorter's balance sheet as a liability to be paid later. It effectively ties up cash in these synthetic short positions for a company that no longer exists, therefore cash is tied up and they can never get the cash back out again. By Dolores reckoning then, the cycle of naked shorting and reverse splits would inevitably result in an ever-increasing number of aged fails. And if that was happening and those liabilities grew bigger and bigger, then federal regulators could see the outlines of the scheme on any financial statement. Delore believed Knight accounted for its aged fails in the sold, not yet purchased liability section of its balance sheet. That's supposed to be an inventory of stocks for use in future market making, which goes up and down as orders are filled. And considering this, according to its own financial reports, Knight's sold, not yet purchased liability jumped from $385 million at the beginning of 2008 to $1.9 billion by mid-2011. $385 million and $1.9 billion are very, very small fry compared to Citadel's number of sold, not yet purchased securities, which now sits at $65.7 billion. It's well known that market makers should be in the business of making markets and not storing securities in their obligation warehouse. Therefore, this number of securities sold and not yet purchased should be absolutely minimal, a few million at absolute max. But that number for Citadel sits at $65.7 billion. That's $65.7 billion worth of synthetic shares or synthetic shorts, which technically no longer exist anymore as the underlying companies have performed reverse splits. This number has obviously ballooned massively since 2019. Back in 2019, it was only sat at $25.2 billion. That means in only two years, because these numbers are at the 31st of December 2021, their number of synthetic shares has increased from 25.2 billion up to 65.7 billion. That means that over the last two years, Citadel has created and lost over $40 billion in synthetic shorts. It's important to remember that while these shares have technically been synthetically shorted already, the companies that it relates to technically no longer exist as the QCIP number has changed. Therefore, that's $40 billion worth of cash that is now tied up and lost forever. Citadel can't reshort these shares because the underlying company technically doesn't exist anymore. And it's also now getting to the point where the liabilities are so large that federal regulators will see the outlines of the synthetic shorting scheme on any financial statement, just like Citadel Securities. I think especially when the financial statements for 2022 are released, this will really, really be seen. During 2022, the market has been crashing and therefore the overall activity in the stock market has dwindled significantly. Therefore, we should see this number for a reasonable hedge fund or for a reasonable market maker actually decreasing and maybe halving again back down to 30 billion. But I imagine with Citadel, especially now that AMC is performing a reverse split, this number is going to end up increasing to 90 billion, maybe 100 billion, maybe even more. More and more of Citadel's money is being tied up into synthetic short positions that technically no longer exist as the QCIP numbers are ever changing. Guys, you may remember last week that I introduced you to Prime XBT. Prime XBT is a crypto trading platform that doesn't mishandle their customers' funds. And today I want to tell you more about Prime XBT and their copy trading platform. With the copy trading platform, you don't need any prior crypto experience. You can simply copy the portfolios of the most profitable crypto traders out there. 
and you can even start and stop following at any time and you can even follow multiple strategies at once. All you need to do is navigate to the copy trading tab of your platform, choose your favorite investors to follow and decide how much of your portfolio you wish to allocate to each trading strategy. So be sure to sign up to PrimeXBT using the link in the description below to get up to $7,000 in free crypto and start your copy trading journey now. And therefore to recap, as Chuck tweeted, Citadel manages $59 billion in their own assets. Don't forget they do leverage this number up and therefore have around 240 to $250 billion in total securities. But while they have $59 billion in assets, they also have $65 billion in liabilities of securities sold, not yet purchased. This is $65 billion in dead money tied up that they can never access and never use ever again. And that is why earlier this year, Citadel limited their investors from withdrawing to 6.25% of the overall fund on a quarterly basis. They also took on a $600 million loan and sold off portions of their business, all because they have more liabilities currently tied up in dead money than they do have actual assets. But it's also important to remember that Citadel Securities isn't just the only fund, they're not just the only bank, and they're not just the only market maker that has securities sold and not yet purchased. For example, JP Morgan Chase has $60 billion in financial instruments sold, not yet purchased at fair value. We've got Goldman Sachs here that also have $79 billion on top of that, of again, financial instruments sold, but not yet purchased. Again, it doesn't stop there. Citigroup Global Markets has 37.9, basically $38 billion of securities sold, and again, not yet purchased. We've also got Morgan Stanley that have 48 billion. We've got Wells Fargo that has 35 billion. And we've even got Bank of America that has $170 billion in security sold, not yet purchased. It's absolutely crazy to think of just how much money right now is tied up in these dead synthetic shorts that can no longer be used. But on top of these dead synthetic shorts, I also wanted to touch on something from my video yesterday that makes it even more expensive for these hedge funds to continue shorting AMC after the conversion. Not only do their ape shorts convert into AMC shorts, so for every one share of ape they were shorting at 60 cents to a dollar, they'll now be shorting an AMC share at four to five dollars, thereby 5xing their short position. But you also have to factor in the change to their maintenance requirements as well. For example, if a short wants to short one share of AMC, they have to pay a short selling fee rate of 98% per year. But on top of that, they also have to have a margin maintenance requirement of 150%. Therefore, if they want to short $100 million worth of AMC shares, they need to have $150 million worth of AMC on hand. So instead of their short position 5xing during the conversion from Ape to AMC, their short position actually 7.5xes during the conversion. So if they've been shorting $10 billion worth of Ape, they're now going to be shorting $75 billion worth of AMC when you factor in that maintenance margin requirement. On top of that, we've also seen the cost to borrow fee for AMC absolutely rocketing again over the last few days. The cost to borrow average right now is 231% and the cost to borrow maximum is around 286% as well. We're also seeing that all important cost to borrow minimum skyrocketing as well up to 45.75%. So if a short was shorting around $10 billion worth of Ape, after the conversion, they'll be shorting around $75 billion worth of AMC. On top of that, they'll also have to stump up $150 billion worth of borrowing costs just for those AMC shorts. So all of a sudden, a $10 billion Ape short position has increased to $150 billion in borrowing costs and $75 billion in shorting costs as well. I think this alone could potentially vaporize many of those shorts, as many of those shorts won't have a spare $200 billion in available margin. That means their short position when you factor in this rocketing cost to borrow fee, basically 25 X's after the conversion. On top of that, the conversion and the reverse split does not make it easier for these shorts to borrow shares, as retail investors will still be holding the same portion of AMC shares after the split and after the conversion as we do right now especially as the market has crashed this year. As Unusual was tweeted, he said the US stock market has lost $11.7 trillion in market capitalization from its January highs. That means these shorts, these hedge funds, and these market makers are already down $11.7 trillion in their total fund values, making them $11.7 trillion closer to being margin called. 
and especially when Ape converts into AMC, practically 25xing their short position requirements, it's going to mean that more and more hedge funds will be closer and closer to margin calls and could end up being liquidated. I also wanted to show you this video that Whimsy Chick posted of a personal chat with Adam Aaron this evening regarding the vote on the reverse split. Adam Aaron practically confirmed everything I've said in this video by saying that Ape is currently too undervalued and therefore by converting it to AMC massively increases the price of those Ape shares as it turns them into AMC shares. Obviously that does increase the share price for us but it also massively increases the cost for these shorts to do their shorting. Common shares are the same thing okay. and there's no explaining it but the market has priced the Ape at one seventh of the common share and they're the same thing so we're giving them away at one seventh of where we should so it makes it so we got to put them back together right and if you own the ape it's going to go up and die and as the okay. company raises more capital in the future we'll raise it at three or four or five or six times the price we're getting now for it and this makes no sense but but you know when we announced it today the ape went up 75 percent right. today well my amc one down it went down went seven up. amc went down seven percent but apes went up 75. so right. that that tells you the market knows that they've been playing well, games with us my amc one called for up 1300 <laughs> really yes really mm -hmm. in the pre-market or you know right. like right at that open. right well there you go and i think right there right at the end is where adam aaron really let us know that he knows exactly what these shorts are doing to the amc stock he said the market knows that they've been playing games with us, aka playing games with the AMC and Ape shares, aka manipulating the prices. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.